there is tremendous pressure on data capacity. Operators, as well as in the Wi-Fi community, people are always looking uh, for ways in which they can offer more data rate, better service to the end user. Hard to find spectrum in the lower frequencies. When we get to millimeter wave, it's opening up new parts of the spectrum for large bandwidth signals so we can get to high data rates, very high peak rates, like gigabits per second. We get to 4K video, we get to higher spatial resolution and higher frame rate video. That's been the big consumer of data services in general. Strictly speaking, millimeter wave would be anything that's below one centimeter of wavelength. So anything about 20 gigahertz is loosely called millimeter wave. Traditionally, millimeter wave has been used for line of sight communication, where between the transmitter and the receiver, there's no obstruction of any sort. They can see each other. When you have a mobile environment, now you have to look at a lot of different changes in the environment that will have impact on your link and your ability to solve the problem so that you can provide service on a reliable basis. Millimeter wave does not like obstacles in its way, because the waves attenuate much more rapidly compared to the lower frequencies. It could be blocked by a simple pole. It could be blocked by a person walking by. The good news is that in many scenarios, there are surfaces that reflect. The bodies of cars tend to be reflective. Surfaces of buildings tend to be reflective. Even in parking lots, the light poles, even as thin as they are, offer a very good opportunity for reflection. And so what our research center did is they took a fixed solution and they added adaptive beamforming to it. So what you can get at millimeter wave is very high gain antennas. So we're looking at many, many antennas. You might have arrays of four, eight, or even 16, and many antennas around the device. And on the base station, we're looking at numbers of antennas that could exceed 128, 256, or even higher. Beamforming is all about setting the right amplitude and phase for each of these elements, so that collectively they steer the beam in, in a certain direction. This has to be done dynamically. You can think of it as a, a spotlight on a stage where a performer is on stage, he's moving around and the spotlight kind of follows them. So when we see our GUI or our UI, you'll see like a, a spherical design of, of where the energy would be most attractive in terms of providing the performance we want. So depending on the uh, angle of arrival of the energy, depending on which reflection in the environment is providing the best path, that's what we'll be able to select. And that's part of the, the beamforming algorithm and the communication between the UE and the base station. In certain instances, uh, coverage continuity might not be the same. And you might have to go from 5G millimeter wave to 4G back to, to 5G in mobility scenarios. So I do think that the, the lower frequencies would play a critical role, both in fallback and in the control plane parts of uh, millimeter wave operation. And our research proves that non-line of sight is fundamentally achievable, and we can deliver services for mobility with millimeter wave. And this is a huge breakthrough that's starting to occur in the research that we're doing and in the standards and in development of products that we're undertaking here at Qualcomm.